Good morning, Jubilee. My name is Jeremiah. If you don't already know me, my dad pastors this church. This is actually my second time <clears throat> preaching. The first time was on another, yes, sir. another youth takeover. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about the importance of uh, what do you call it? God leading you through your life. This is a very important subject that we took part in youth group, where we had a demonstration take place. What? In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him. Instead of doing your classic boring sermon, I'm actually going to do the demonstration. <laughs> here, right, right here. If I could have uh, any volunteers willingly to be blindfolded and walk. Only one so far. Uh, what's her name? Eden. So we're going to have uh, Eden walk through the maze and try her best to avoid all the objects. This maze represents your life. And the obstacles in it represent the obstacles in your life, and she's going to try to avoid them. Whenever you're ready, you can go. As you see, she made it to the end of the course, as you would make it to your end of your life. Could I have a second volunteer come up and guide her through the maze with only your words? Uh, you know. This time you're going to guide her only using your voice and telling her where to go. See, this time, she made it through the maze a lot easier and a lot smoother than the first time because somebody was guiding her through the entire thing. Come on. Good, <laughs> if I could have Evan come to the stage. Thank you, Jeremiah. So, so Maya's um, demonstration, you know, clearly demonstrates having 
a relationship with the Lord and having that voice, building that, that relationship, walking with him, he can guide you through the journey of life, right? That's the demonstration, that's the illustration that when you build an intimate relationship with Jesus, um, you know, when you walk through life, you're going to walk through obstacles. And you might bump and trip and different, and different things. But um, it'd be much easier if you had the lover of your soul walking with you and li- listening to that, that still small voice walking you through and giving you directions as you go. Amen? Amen. So at youth group, uh, again, we come here Monday nights. And I just asked a couple um, of the girls here if they would just quickly just testify, you know, something that they've learned or pulled from from youth group um, as we come and as we, as we meet. Um, so we have Jess and we have Jordan, who uh, bravely said, yes, we'd love to share something. So, Jess. Um, on Monday nights, we come to youth group. And um, I really like the environment that everyone just comes in. And, like, it's just very happy and energetic yeah. games. During, like, the lessons, what I've mostly taken in was probably, like, forgiving people. Not necessarily forgetting it, but, like, forgiving them so, like, the hurt can come out of your heart so you can be happier. So yeah, so you can heal better. Come on. Come on. Um, so basically everything Jesse said was like really true. Um, <laughs> um, like I personally think that a lot of like the broken people can come here to like feel safe and like feel wanted and loved a lot more than they would probably feel. Like for me example, I suffered from depression and I wanted to kill myself a lot of the time and I was like around like eight years old. Um, And my friend had told me about youth group and I was like, okay, I'll give it a try, I guess. And it really helped me through my life and yeah. Thank you, ladies. Incredible. So, again, um, our youth group, um, we've, you know, for Caitlin and I and the team, it's always been, and we've taken it from Trevor and Leslie, is to to come in to build um, healthy, godly friendships with each other. And it can be awkward at times, right? You come in, you're new, and you're, but we kind of love that in the beginning, right? Because then you see them grow and build relationship and friendship, and you're like, wow, that person's from it. That person thought that never happened. And they just support each other, and they love each other, and they walk together, as you see. I could honestly um, say, hey, you know, someone needs, someone's leg is hurting, and they need prayer right now. All of them would just go over and start praying instantly. And I'm just, like, I'm bragging a bit, but that's just the culture that we have at our youth group. Build healthy, godly friendships with each other. Um, Obviously, um, build a healthy friendship with Jesus. Go deeper in Jesus, but then go into the practical ministry gifts and extend that to the world around us. And that's kind of what we do. That's our motto. Amen. And that's, uh, that's what Trevor and Leslie put into us, too, so... And I think that's it's, it's in our it's in our jubilee DNA as well. If, if you look um, at our at our goal at our statements and our goal, but um, I, I also want to say in in the announcements, I actually forgot to mention um, coming up next week. Just before I call Evan up, um, is our church picnic June twenty fifth. Who's going? I think it's in Wildwood. Yes. So that is after the service next Sunday. Also, um, uh, that night we have. Um, Mark DuPont coming to us. Join us 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Same night next Sunday, or same day as the as the Wildwood uh, Church picnic. Mark DuPont back. So go have lunch, get some rest after. Come back. Mark will be here joining us that evening for some worship and and ministry as well. Amen. Okay. Without further ado, let's welcome up Trevor's eldest son, Evan. <laughs> All right, stretch your hands towards Evan. We bless him. Evan has been in a season of school ministry. He's come out. He's actually, I'm so proud of this guy. Come back, not really knowing where the Lord was taking him. And he's like, you know what? I'll just start my own business. (laughs) I love it, man. I just so, I've known him his whole life. And I'm just so proud of Evan and the man he's become and is is on his way in his life right now. So uh, bless you, man. I'm excited to hear what God's got in your heart. Thank you. So yeah. So I'm Evan. I'm yeah the eldest son, and 
Uh, yeah, I just came, I went to the school of ministry in Toronto for about like six months. And then I came back, I think it's been like four months now. And yeah, it's been kind of a journey just figuring out like, hey, God, what do you have for my life? Like what plan do you want me to go into? And it's definitely been a journey in just hearing his voice and trying to follow him. And so when we were preparing for this youth takeover, I got a text saying, hey, do you want to speak? And honestly, like in my mind, I'm like, nope, probably not, <laughs> because I do not like speaking that much. But I don't know, I felt like the Holy Spirit said to do it. And yeah, and I just, I feel like also it's a good place to grow, like especially if it's something I'm, I don't feel confident in, then I can just grow in it in a space that's healthy. And so then when I was driving, I was just asking God, okay, God, what do you want me to speak on? And I feel like for Father's Day, obviously you do something about fathers, like the father's heart or something. But honestly just got like, I was just thinking about like worshiping and then having like a lifestyle of worship. And I feel like the Holy Spirit just put on my heart like just a worship lifestyle. So that's what I'm gonna talk about uh, today. And the question is, so like what is a worship lifestyle? Like what does that look like? And if you guys wanna flip to Romans 12, one to two. But yeah, so Romans 12, uh, one to two says, and so uh, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior of, and other um, customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And yeah, so what I take away from that is that a worship lifestyle is not just like just a feeling or not just playing the guitar or singing and having the time in the service where we're just worshiping God, which is amazing. But it's the, having a worship lifestyle isn't just that part of it. It also is just giving your heart to God and having a heart posture that you're just going to choose God to let him guide you because God's plan is perfect for you. God's plan is he's designed you in a certain way to go the path that he has for you. And yeah, so how that starts off is just by having a heart towards him and just choosing to pursue him and what he has for you. And for me, that's looked like, so it's just like when I'm working or what job I wanna go into or what friendships I need to pursue, I will just ask God like, hey God, what do I need to do in this? Where should I go? And God, just please open up the doors that you want opened up for me and close the ones you want closed. And right after the school, I had this period of time where I was looking for a job, it was about a month, and I was asking God, just like, I don't necessarily want to go back into construction, but, um, but I want to try to pursue these other jobs. And with that, I was asking God, even though I don't necessarily want to go back into that, I'll just, just open up the door that you want opened up for me and close the one you want closed. And, I, and all the other jobs just uh, weren't opening up, but then eventually I got this opportunity to renovate my grandparents' place, which is like this little house behind their house. Um, and eventually that started and I started my own business with renovations and stuff like that. But through that, I really feel like, and now looking back on it, I could totally see how much God has been preparing me to do this and to step into this. And I really feel like with stepping into that type of job that I can honor God. And it's not worshiping in like a guitar, but it's, also, it's honoring God in the sense that I'm gonna work hard for him and I'm gonna just, everything I wanna do, I wanna honor him. And a good story and a good person to look after like what that looks like is the story about David. And from reading David, you just notice like he is an amazing worshiper. Like he's just worshiping all the time. But at the same time, he also is an amazing warrior. And before he'd go into battle, he would ask God multiple times, like, should I do this? Should I go? And he would just give it to God and just, and just ask him to just follow him. And if he said no, then he wouldn't go. But if he said yes, he would go. And every, every time he'd just win. <laughs> but yeah. And also, what, uh, what I think a worship lifestyle looks like is choosing to 
especially in the workplace, is choosing to just like, for me, I just put on worship music and just try to create an atmosphere of just worship for God, even though I'm not like singing or whatever, I'm just using a drill or a nailer. I'll just be having worship music on and just talking to God like as I go. And yeah. And what I feel for today is having a worship lifestyle, if you want to just choose to do that, all it is is just a choice. And having a lifestyle towards God and just to choose Him and choose the path that you have or that He has for you is not just, not just a feeling like, okay, God, I'm feeling like I need to go this way. It's a choice to be like, okay, God, I want you to lead my life, you to uh, take me in the path that you want me. And I feel like sometimes it's kind of scary to try to go towards something, to work towards something that you don't know, that you, that you feel like is like not for sure or something that is just like, kind of like a mystery. And one time when I was um, talking to God, there's this verse that he highlighted to me like so clearly because I was just worrying, worrying, worrying. And it's, uh, so the verse is Luke 12, 29 to 32. And what it says is, and don't be concerned about what to eat, what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, so what that just shows me is just, like, God already wants to give you what he has for you. Like, what, what his plan is for your life. He wants to give you. He wants to guide you. He wants to take care of all the little things that you want to worry about. Like, he already knows your needs. He already knows, like... He's more concerned about your needs than you are about your needs. Like, he already is going for it. And all you got to do is just give it to him. And in, in that sense, my life, I want to just live a worship lifestyle in the sense that I'm going to just give it all to God. And that I'm just going to let him guide my life and just choose to pursue what he has for me. And whether that looks like just working hard or something or talking to somebody, getting led by the Holy Spirit and just going up and like, even though it could be scary, just going and telling somebody about God. And yeah, so I would like to call up the, um, the youth to come and uh, pray for people if you guys would like to get prayer. And what I just want to pray for is just to have courage to choose to let God guide your life. Choose to let God uh, be the Lord over your life and for you to follow what he has for you. And yeah, so if that resonates with you, do you want to just uh, come up and just get a prayer from the youth? But yeah, so I'll just do a little prayer first. But yeah, Lord, so I just bless everybody in here right now. I thank you for the plan that you have for everybody's life. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides us through that and guides us through kind of like the maze that is our life. And I thank you that you are speaking to us like a little whisper and just helping us guide, turning left, going straight, stopping, or just wait, 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 and then go that way. And I just thank you that you are there and you are doing that for us. So Lord, I just ask that our ears would just be open to you, to open them to the sensitivity of your voice, to help us listen and just try to listen to what you have and to guide us. And I just thank you that our life will just look like worship for you. It's not just the singing and praising. It's also just in everything we do just to honor you, Lord. So yeah, Lord, I just pray for our lives to just, just for us to choose you, to choose what you have for us. Yeah, Lord. And I just thank you that you are guiding us. I thank you that you are there, you are guiding us and showing us where we need to go and that your plan is perfect for us and that you've equipped us with everything that we need.
Yeah, Lord, I also just pray that you would just give us courage. That you give us courage in stepping into what you have for us. That you give us courage that even though we don't can't quite see what you have for us, so the the like the end goal or the the path that you have, Lord, that we can't quite see it, Lord. I pray that you just give us courage just to trust in you, to have faith for you, and just give us courage to put our faith and put our trust in you.